homecoming at Iowa Western. The Reavers play dodgeball with the Conquistadors. Ballin' at Titan Stadium. Lewis Central throwing it around with the Bees. CB Stadium invaded by some Black Raiders as the Lynx look to hold the line. Lining up for another W at Al Lieber Field. Bounce back time for the Birds. Time to play like a number one team. Jamming it in Canesville. Stuffing it at AL. Netting another shutout. I'm Juice Williams. I'm the Dark Knight. And the Bluff Sports Zone starts right now. Right now. Right now. Right, right now. now. Baby. Let's go. Right now. Everybody loves a parade. Iowa Western comes marching in with its first ever homecoming parade, part of a week-long celebration. Hello, I'm JJ Davis, and welcome to this latest edition of the Bluff Sports Zone. And what's homecoming without a football game? And usually, it's a patty cake opponent and an easy win. Well, this year, no exception. You're Iowa Western. It's over just as soon as it begins. The Reavers find the end zone five of the first six possessions. Tie game under nine minutes left first quarter. Tay Bender, easy throw and catch to Alex Reed. 45-yard scoring strike, 14 to seven. The home team's up for good. The defense then pitches in. Mondo Williams, sixth pick, four games, and almost takes it to the house. Anthony Anderson does the honors. The 257 pounder pounds it in from six yards out, 21 to seven. Touchdown, Reavers! Every touchdown drive takes three plays or less. After Iowa Western blocks a punt, Bender to Taj Williams, and number two, off to the races. Touchdown, Reavers! 56 yards, 28-7 Reavers after just one quarter. And the head coach? Just another walk in the park. Look out, early second quarter, Dodge City falling apart. Safety, and it's 30 to seven. Five of Iowa Western scoring plays cover 43 yards or more. Bender lights it up, got it. Alex Reed, the former Titan catches just two balls, but both go for TDs. This one covers 64 yards. 37 to seven, still under nine minutes left in the first half. Conquistadors quarterback DeAndre Ford comes in averaging 365 yards passing per game. The sophomore, 10 of 19 for just 149. James Newton comes up with it. Mark Thompson through traffic. Dodge City trails 37-14 at the break. Cole Reavers, number one. Cole Reavers. The dark side defense, seven tackles for losses. Kelvin Rainey gets bullish. And on the other side, Tay Bender, five of nine, 187 yards, four touchdowns. Andrew Davis makes it look easy. 44-14 Reavers early in the third quarter. Now Iowa Western picks off three passes. Number 10 again, Kelvin Rainey, as the home team holds the visitors to just 269 total yards. The Reavers pile up 482. Anderson, his second for six, and second-ranked Iowa Western conquers the Conquistadors 57 to 14. A two yard champion. Right, number 29, Anthony Anderson. Touchdown, Reavers. I was really pleased. You know, the, we made some uh, mistakes last week, and, and we had to come out fast, and we did. Um, defensively, you know, they drive down and score on us right away, but um, I think we settled in a little bit and played extremely well. The rest of the game got a lot of people some playing time. The improvement of the offense from week one to now. Oh, I can't compare it. You know, our linemen are hungry. You know, when they make mistakes, you know, they want to improve on them. And today, you know, we, we had a couple mistakes here and there, but, you know, I can't thank my offensive line enough. Didn't know you had that speed in you from the old high school days. See, that's funny because every one of my teammates was like, oh, Reed, you actually look like you had some speed there. It's like they're, they, like they don't think I have any speed, but I guess it is what it is. What is it about the defense getting better every week? 
uh, you know, we a lot of film study. We study our opponents. We uh, we like to see what they like to run a lot. And when we come to the game, we come in instantly knowing what they're about to run. And you know, we just feel confident every time we're out there. Every play, it's just it's just confidence. Thanks for coming out. I tell them each week. It, it, it don't matter who you play. The next week is a bigger game than the one you just played. And uh, the bullseye gets a little bit bigger each week. That it does. The Reavers knock off their fourth straight Jayhawk Conference opponent. And next up, the first Iowa Community Conference game. One win Ellsworth comes to Titan Stadium. So look at that. DeAndre Ford shut down for the most part, under 200 yards passing completes under 50% of his throws, and Dodge City just 84 net yards on the ground. The Conquistadors four of 17 on third down. And on the other side, Tay Bender completes just five passes, but four go for touchdowns, three over 40 yards or more. And the former LC stud, well, Alex Reed, two big bombs. Now the Reavers score five TDs in their first 14 snaps, Roll out 37 to zip at the break and coast from there. Up next, the Panthers. Now Ellsworth humbled Highland. Iowa Western crushed the Scotties. So to be honest, the next game, pretty much like the last and worse. It's a scene that never gets old and neither does this. Ring a bell? Members of the 2013-14 Iowa Western baseball team received their national championship ring. It's great for Council Bluffs. It's, it's you know, Council Bluffs is, is where Iowa Western's at. And uh, Iowa Western, I'm part of Iowa Western, and baseball's part of Iowa Western Athletics. It's a, uh, it's a team uh, within a team, and uh, we're really proud to do our part. Thank you very much. Ron and Sue Mahoney do their part. Pitching in financially for the lifelong memories. Yes, it's a scene that never gets old. Third time, in fact, in five years for the Reavers baseball team. Ring up another one for Iowa Western. Now, hungry for some more football? You want more than just the cheese, the sauce, the crust, the whole shebang. Well, I got just the thing. What time is it? Game's up! What time is it? Game's up! What time is it? Game's up! Can't get enough of the Reavers? Still wondering how AL can score yet another dominating performance over TJ? Well, some food for thought for all you Monday morning quarterbacks out there. First, some food, as in the one and only pizza from Pizza King. And some thought. Pick a card, any card, and win some prizes. Compliments of Mr. Jim Brown and his sponsors. It's the quarterback club's bi-weekly food and football binge. Quarterback club started uh, on my way home from work one day and I uh, heard the big red breakfast uh, was going on and I thought it'd be a good way to maybe do a little fundraiser for, uh, for the football program. And actually I had a kid that was playing out there and I thought it was a good way to sort of bring in, uh, bring in some people and some fans. Do, well, you don't have to. It's, it's twenty dollars a car. That's our fundraiser, and then this is what we're raffling off tonight. But you know, about six hundred dollars worth of item. Well, that's enough to start with. Thank you very much for the pizza. We sure appreciate it and support you hundred percent. I'd love to fill the place. You know, hopefully hundred people, and to have all four city high school coaches here talking, and then Coach Strohmeyer talking you know, and highlighting their programs. $25 to Fairway, $25 to Tasty Treat, Jack of Spades, the Jack of Spades. I think everybody thinks it's a great, uh, you know, it's a great idea. You know, it's, it's, it's a great way for, the, I think, for the, like I said, the football coaches to highlight their programs, highlight their kids. Um, you know, it's a night out, you know, for, for, for anybody. Any, any, anybody who loves football, you know, it's a night to, you know, eat some pizza and, and uh, talk a little football and, you know, listen to the coaches talk. So come one, come all. From the one and only pizza from Pizza King to the only one of its kind football feast in Council Bluffs. Quite simply, you'll eat it up. The next chance to chew on some more football? Tuesday night, September 30th, Pizza King, North Broadway. The fun starts at 6. Now plenty of pizza along with door prizes. All compliments of Mr. Jim Brown and his sponsors. Thank you, Jim. Thank you, NJCAA. 
for naming the Iowa Western volleyball team the new top banana. Now, do the Reavers live up to it? But first, what's up with LCTJ? Big numbers when we come back. For more than a quarter century, thousands of Southwest Iowa athletes have relied on this team, Jenny Ed Sportsman. Their sole focus is to prevent, diagnose, and treat your sports injury. They even partner with the surgeons at Ortho West, ensuring you get your own exclusive roadmap back to action. Methodist Jenny Ed Sports Med invites all Southwest Iowa athletes to its free walk-in clinic, open every Saturday morning, August through October. Jenny Ed Sports Med. Hi, I'm Mark Puev, head football coach at Thomas Jefferson High School, and you're watching the Bluffs Sports Zone. This portion of the Bluff Sports Zone is brought to you by Toby Jack's Mineola Steakhouse. Serving customers with dine-in, catering, takeout, banquet room, and more. Toby Jack's Mineola Steakhouse, home of the Thursday night taco ride. TJ's made the rounds. First, St. Albert at Lewis Central. Then Abraham Lincoln at CB Stadium. And finally, completing the city hat trick back to LC and a fist fight with the Titans. Now the home team comes in hot. Lewis Central is unbeaten and coming off that first road win in a while at Harlan. And the Yellow Jackets, another blowout loss to AL. Here's IWTV student Zach Harper Blunt. In town battle as the Jackets face the Titans. Early first quarter. Ryan Main gets the handoff, finds the hole, a 12 yard touchdown run. LC on the board first. 6.06 left in the quarter. Austin Simmons, who'd have four touchdowns in the first half, to Connor Hannafin. His first touchdown, home team up 14 zip. A minute and a half later, Simmons to Caleb Shudak. A one play, 32 yard touchdown drive, 21 0. Number nine caught four balls for 69 yards. Second quarter, 28 nada. The South Dakota recruit to Mitch Brinkman. It's a 35 point game. First half winding down, Simmons from one senior to another. Caleb Hannafin, touchdown. 42 nothing at the half. Austin Simmons would have five touchdown passes overall. Lewis Central with 520 yards. TJ just 208. Yellow Jackets not wanting to go down quietly. Jason Wallace up the middle, and he's in. Jackets finally on the board. But an extra point, well, it's not enough. The quarterback rolls to his right, finds Gabe Sarita for the conversion. Early fourth quarter, Wallace hands it off to Robert Conley. Touchdown, and that'll do it. Lewis Central picks up the homecoming victory, 49-15. It feels great to play home and win on homecoming for all the alumni and all the student body and everybody else. Uh, we thought coming in, if we took care of business, uh, we thought we'd pull out a win. So, You guys got that first eight points on the board. What was that feeling on the sidelines? It gave us a little bit of boost, but we knew that we still had a lot of work if we wanted to get back in the game. So, Well, those are the two big keys right there, is trying to make sure we didn't have any missed assignments, uh, no turnovers, uh, wanted to win the special teams battle, and like I said, uh, you know, there's some things that we really need to clear up. Well, we get to go to Dowling next week, so uh, we get the opportunity to uh, uh, play against one of the, the great programs in the state and, and nationally ranked teams. So uh, it's a great opportunity, and, uh, and, and our kids are hope they'll practice hard, and, and we'll go up there and compete and plan to win. The Titans are now 4-0 on the season. Next up for LC is a road trip to Dowling Catholic. For the Bluff Sports Zone, I'm Zach Harper Blunt. Thanks, Zach. Meanwhile, the Lynx have a tough job on their hands, as in the ninth-ranked Class 4A team in the state from Sioux City East. Now, it's a chance for Abraham Lincoln to make a statement. Here's IW TV student Matt Corum. The Lynx coming off a 34-15 victory over bitter rival TJ. First quarter in Sioux City East takes no prisoners. Quarterback J.J. Stevens to Ty Benson. The wideout takes a short pass and makes the most of it. 54 yards, Raiders lead 14-7. The junior catches five balls for 98. Second quarter, visitors back on offense. Running back Alex Dueb 
walks in untouched from the five. East up 24-7 at the break. Third quarter, Black Raiders quarterback J.J. Stevens looking for a man deep. Finds a wide open Dom Felmister. It is a 30-yard touchdown pass. 31-7 Raiders. Stevens throws for 287 yards and two touchdowns. The Lynx will try to rally the troops later in the third. Josh Kaby rolls right, looking for a man. Ready, man. Finds Peyton Hiffernan. The senior running back finishes with 111 yards receiving, AL Trails 31-14. Crabby turns it in his own standout game. The junior throws for 298 yards and two touchdowns, but it's not enough. Sioux City East outscores Abraham Lincoln 31-14. You know, obviously I'd like to be born up. We're 2-2, we're two and, two and, and uh, well, there's room for improvement, but as I was telling these guys tonight, we, all the parts are there. Uh, we start district play next Friday, and, and you know, it's not about how you start and how you finish. Uh, yes, definitely. Um, we fought all the way through, and. I think we should have won the game, it's just this time. Stayed in this one. Make it if we got to execute. I mean, that's the bottom line, really. Is there anything from your own personal game that you can see that you want to work on going into next week for yourself? You know, once again, I got to be more comfortable in the pocket. I got to stay in there. I got to make those throws. I got to deliver. AL sits at 2-2. Two two. The Lynx open district play at Des Moines Abraham Lincoln. For the Bluff Sports Zone, I'm Matt Corum. Thanks, Matt. And what about St. Albert? Well, you can bet the ranch practice was a little more focused this week, if you know what I'm saying. The seventh ranked Falcons coming off that streak breaking whitewashing at Logan Magnolia, ready to take it out on Windless Riverside. Here's IW TV student Frank Prazen. The Falcons fly home to battle the Bulldogs. Early first quarter already down 3-0. Riverside quarterback Brad McGinnis picked off by St. Albert senior Jared Mahoney. Freshman QB Luke Waters takes it himself for a five yard touchdown run. Home team up 10-0. Visitors trail 13-0 in the second quarter. McGinnis pitches the ball to Tucker Blum. The senior lets it fly. Tanner Starr was wide open. The senior turns into an 80-yard scoring play. Riverside is on the board 13-6. The Falcons lead 20-12 late in the half. Glenn Bertelson takes the kickoff 75 yards to the house. St. Albert leads 27-12 at the break. Third quarter, Bulldogs battle back. McGinnis to Blum, wide open. This time it goes 78 yards. Riverside down 27-18. Eight minutes left, Bertelson, who ran the ball eight times for 70 yards, carries the rock here for 45. It sets up the TD 34-18. Late in the third quarter, Waters, who was 15 for 24, 154 yards, throws the second touchdown pass to Gage Bowman, 41-18, St. Albert, fourth quarter. Luke Gronstall breaks free. A 65-yard touchdown run. The Falcons outscore the Bulldogs 54-34. It was a good game for my quarterback this, uh, this game. Uh, Riverside, their D was uh, pretty good in the first half, but second half we figured it out. We need to get better. You know, we've, we've, got to, we've got to iron out some things penalty-wise. We've got to keep you know, doing the things that we think we might be able to do. We've got to keep throwing the ball, challenge our defense to play a little better, and just slowly progress. Try to be playing our best ball at the end of the season. Then Albert runs through Riverside to win three of their last four. For the Bluff Sports Zone, I'm Frank Crazen. Thanks, Frank. So the Falcons flying high once again, landing indoors. The top 10 links look to 86 the Black Raiders, but next up, jam in the gym. Okay, but did they win after the break? At Council Bluff Savings Bank, our goal is to help you, your families, and your businesses grow and prosper for generations. We take pride in our community, whether it's volunteering our time or helping individuals, families, and businesses succeed. We provide you with the personal service and attention you deserve. With over 220 years of banking experience, decisions are made locally. We are Council Bluffs people operating at Council Bluffs Bank to help Council Bluffs be a better place to work and live. Council Bluffs Savings Bank, hometown banking, the way it used to be. Member FDIC. Your future is here at CBTV. You're in the game. You take the shots. It's your story. The Media Studies Program at Iowa Western. Real Reality TV, starring you. For more information, go to iwcc.edu. So the new poll comes out earlier in the week. Guess who's number one? Yep, suddenly that bullseye just got a little bit bigger. But it couldn't have come at a better time for Iowa Western. 
jamming the gym time for that big showdown with 15th ranked Indian Hills. Just another walk in the park for the Reavers? Here's IDUB TV student Jake Wright. Number one ranked Iowa Western host on rank Indian Hills. The Warriors come out firing. Lauren Streets with back to back kills. She had 11 on the day, 44 as a team. Indian Hills up 15 to 10 midway through the first set. Camia Pope is denied by Cassidy Sullivan. But the freshman gets revenge, ends the first set. Indian Hills wins it 25 to 20. Reavers looking to bounce back. Allie Dawson provides the spark. The All-American with one of her 16 kills. Macy Coffey joins the fun. Iowa Western wins the second set, 25-16. Third set, Katia Sanchez puts the home team up five to four, but the Warriors are still fighting. Cameo Pope delivers one of her 11 kills. Reavers lead, 21-17. But Iowa Western would capture the third set, 26-24. Reavers still rolling. The ace makes it eight to five in the fourth set. The freshman from Brazil strikes again. Gabby Streziari totaled 12 kills in all. Iowa Western takes the fourth set and the match 25 to 20. Well, we just came out really flat and I just think that uh, we're not used to that Indian Hills. That was a very good Indian Hills team and they came prepared. They knew our team well. Uh, we didn't pass well. We didn't serve well. And uh, I think the majority of a match to be won is serving passes. It's fun because with the crowd, they, they were a big help. And just to be able to beat them on our home court with a lot of people, it was, it was awesome. It feels really good. We were kind of worried because they were undefeated so far. But we did a great job. Um, we weren't, weren't us like in the first set, but we catch them up and it was really good. The Reavers are now 14-0 as Indian Hills falls to 14-1. For the Bluff Sports Zone, I'm Jake Wright. Thanks, Jake. A little bit of a wake-up call for the Reavers as they find out that getting to number one is one thing. Staying there is another. The top-ranked team in the nation hits the road to Hutch and not even close. Big Blue sweeps the plains defeats the military, the host school takes a set, and the state of Seminole, shutout city. Alicia Williams and the Reavers rolling, a sparkling 16 and 0. Up next, our play of the week. Your guess is as good as mine. Meanwhile, the Lynx take the guesswork out of a team from Sioux City on the other side. I make learning a privilege, not a chore. And unconventional methods, common. I'm a teacher. I make more. of the Bluff Sports Zone, brought to you by Cutler O'Neill, Meyer Woodring, family-owned funeral home, serving Council Bluffs in Southwest Iowa for over 100 years. You know, I like Brittany Rittenauer. The former player is just what the Lynx ordered when AL landed its new volleyball coach a few years back. Last year, a conference regular season championship. And this year, well, Abraham Lincoln's the ninth ranked Class 5A team in the state. And of course, the state tournament is always the goal. Here's IDUB TV student Jack Clemish. Welcome to Abraham Lincoln. The Lynx host Sioux City East. Set one, Kelsey Johnson makes it 6 2. Abraham Lincoln. The Black Raiders try to keep it close. Lexi Lapke taps it down. Sioux City East trails by four. The home team just keeps on rolling. Kylie Goodvin knocks it down. 10 to 3. A.O. The Lynx close out the first set. Lauren Kopitz slams it home. Abraham Lincoln wins 25-16. Set two. A.O. A scoring run. Dana Roth with the kill. 
can't be returned. Two to zero. Clay Murphy slams down. Six zero. Samantha Bonnet with 41 assists with the A 7 0 run for the Lynx. City, City East finally gets on the board. Gabby Rowe with the point. 7 1. The visitors keep on coming. Lexi Lapfleet with a thunderous hit. 8 to 3. Lapfleet, the sophomore, with her eighth kill. The Black Raiders trail 9 to 4, but it's not enough. Hannah Hennings with the block. Ayo takes set two, 25-16. Set three, the Lynx grab the early lead. Hennings taps it down, five to four, Abraham Lincoln. The senior Lauren Copas smacks it home, six to four. Sioux City East cuts it to one. Kelsey Smith with her ninth kill, six seven, AL. The Lynx go on a 5-2 run. Kelsey Murther with her 8th kill. 12-8. Abraham Lincoln, home team, piles it on. Hannah Henning with one of her 11 kills. Lynx, 18-9. And Lauren Copas and set 3 and the match with her 14th kill. Abraham Lincoln flakes out the Black Raiders. 3 sets to none. For the Blue Sports Zone, I'm Jack Clemish. Thanks, Jack. From volleyball to soccer, the top-ranked men's junior college team in the nation continues to take no prisoners. The Reavers kick it around in the Jefferson College Tournament. Now shut out the hosts and then double overtime against the eighth-ranked team in the country. But Iowa Western comes through outgutting the dart two to one. Now Carver and the boys now seven, zip and one. Now it's time for our play of the week. Bought to you by Buena Vista University. Happy homecoming at Lewis Central. Quarterback Austin Simmons lights up Thomas Jefferson. The senior, five touchdown passes, four in the first half, as the Titans stick it to the Yellow Jackets. Austin Simmons with our play or plays of the week. The play of the week is bought to you by Buena Vista University. Face-to-face -face classes start every eight weeks, right here in Council Bluffs. And so, another chapter is written, another show is in the books. And of course, this novel has a long way to go as the fall season rolls on. Now, remember to keep it here for more news and information in your community by tuning in to the Council Bluffs News with Marie Zeitner. So, for this latest edition of the Bluff Sports Home, I'm J.J. Davis, and as always, I'll see you around.